24th, Friends and Family. And May 31st, Pentecost Sunday. On May 22nd and 24th, the Youth Department will host a virtual armed youth conference with Sister Anissa Fowler via Zoom on Friday night. And via our meeting on Sunday with Reverend Victor Jackson. If you are viewing our video, you reside in New York City, and are looking for a home church, text the words count me in, or I want to join to 347-862-9261, or email us at prayforme at oneness.nyc, and someone will contact you as soon as possible. Please pay attention to our website and social media for updates and information as we respond to COVID-19. Also, remain attentive to precautionary measures from federal, state, and city officials. We pray that everyone will do their due diligence to keep themselves and families safe, while we trust God to protect us from those things beyond our control. God bless you. Welcome to Oneness, where we serve and keep and love everybody. Have your liberty in Jesus, he'll make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Joy is here, peace is here, everything you need. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Oneness. Praise the Lord, everybody, and to God be the glory. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice. We've come to be glad in it. We're just going to take a minute and wish the mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day. Our wish to you, our blessing to you, is that may grace, His grace and His mercies follow you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. So we bless your name, Holy Father. We worship, we adore you, oh God. We come to declare that you are in control. We come to declare that there is none mighty as you, oh God. So we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We sing. Pray. Trust in your name, Jesus. Oh, yeah. You're able to save and deliver us. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Say blessing. Blessing and honor, glory and power unto our God forever.
put our trust in your name, Jesus. Oh, yeah. There's nothing to fear you are. Be with us. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Say blessing. Blessing and honor, glory and power. Praise the Lord, everyone. On this beautiful Mother's Day, let's take the time to go before the throne of God. It's praying time. And I'm grateful for all the mothers who are joining us this morning. 
God is our very present help in time of trouble. Join me as, we, as I pray. God, we thank you. We honor you. We lift you up this morning, for you are worthy to be praised. As the songwriter says, Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter in the stormy blast, and our eternal home. God, I'm grateful this morning that we can look unto the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh even from you. God, this morning I bring before you our biological mothers and our mothers who have stood in the gap for those, oh God, without a mother. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to strengthen them, Lord, with might in the inner man. Strengthen them mentally, oh God, physically, Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, even for the frontliners, the mothers who go to work every day as nurses, doctors, bus drivers, God, those who are in the retail service. I'm asking you, God, to assure them of your covering on a daily basis. You promise never to leave us nor forsake us. And God, this morning, we will not be afraid. God, we will not panic. But God, we will be courageous as we go about our daily duties knowing that our help is coming from you. God, this morning I even pray, Lord, for the service. I pray for the speaker that will minister to our woman this morning. God, undergird them with strength. Let your anointing and your blood rest upon them. God, continue, Lord, to keep us, Lord. God, for we are the apple of your eye. And we thank you for the victory, oh God. That is ours, Jesus, because, God, you won the victory. We have the victory this morning. And we thank you in advance for all that you are going to do. God, for the mothers, oh God, who are sick among us, we bring them before you, Jesus. You are the great physician. And I'm asking, oh God, that you would touch their bodies, heal their minds, oh God. Raise them up for your glory. God, we thank you again for what you are going to do. For you are worthy of all our praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. This morning, I especially want to want us to grab hold of one of those benefits and it's because we are the children of God. The word of God says for as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. We are partakers now of the covenant of the promises. We are no longer hopeless and godless. We are no longer strangers and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens with the saints of God. We are part of the household of God. So when you sing this song, sing with the understanding that you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me and know his love for me. Yes, his love for me. Who the Son, who the Son sets free, is free indeed. Oh, is free indeed. We are children of the I'm Most High God. At last he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. So declare.
sing that verse again because it says, Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free. Oh, I'm free indeed. Oh, of the covenant of promises. We have an inheritance kept in heaven for us. It's incorruptible. It's undefiled. It faded not in my father's house. a time of giving. For those who don't know, we have four ways to give. You can one, download our Givelify app from your smartphone or tablet and select OPT. Number two, you can choose the program and the amount to give. Or number three, you can simply hit give. It's as easy as ABC or tap, 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 give. Others can continue to give by check or cash. Checks can be mailed to OPT, PO Box 502, St. Albans, New York, 11412. Or simply dropped off at the church at 19801 Linden Boulevard between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. At OPT, we have a pledge we recite at giving. 
We invite you to join us at this time as we recite our pledge. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given back to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a giver. I bring my tithes, offerings, and alms today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises, bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor. I command the enemy to pay back sevenfold of all the things he has stolen from me. This day I shall recover all without fail, for I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Oneness, the ministry that serves and keeps. I bring you greetings from our pastor, the Reverend Lincoln Graham Jr. We are thrilled that you chose to join us today for our service. If you are joining us for the first time on Facebook, please like and share. You could also visit us on our Instagram, YouTube, and our website. Relax, enjoy the service. I know you are going to be blessed. Again, I say welcome to One. Happy Mother's Day. We want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of Oneness Pentecostal Tabernacle. We thank you for all that you do, for showering us with your love, guidance, discipline, and instilling in us the word of God. We love and appreciate you all. We also want to give a special happy Mother's Day shout out to our first ladies, Mama Graham, Sister Marie, and Sister Hazel. We appreciate you all for your tireless work, and ending love, and enduring sacrifice.
Let's hit this right here. Come on. I know you're going through some stuff now. Yeah. You feel like giving up now. Uh -huh. Your spot is tough now. Uh -huh. But how can you learn if you don't fall? Uh -huh. How can you walk if first you don't crawl? Uh -huh. But through it all, you keep blessing me. Yeah. While they pressing me. Right. And they testing me. Yeah. They keep stressing me. Right. Because they never heard a preacher flow. What? Show. Yeah. Go. What? No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Questions for tomorrow And there were times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation That trials come to make me strong I've been a lot of places And I've seen a lot of faces And there were times I felt so alone But in those lonely hours Those precious lonely hours Jesus lets me know that I'm his own and I say through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. So I thank God for the mountains, I thank him for the valleys, 
I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. So I say, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Yes, through it all. Whoa. to depend upon his word so i say through it all through it all i've learned to trust in jesus i've learned to trust in god through depend upon his word. I've learned to depend upon his word. I lean not unto my own understanding. I've learned to depend upon the living word, the word that will never fail. I've learned to depend upon his word. To depend upon his word. Lord, everybody. Happy Mother's Day 2020. May not have been the Mother's Day that we all imagined, but it's still the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. To my mother, my mother-in-law, sisters, aunties, the ladies of Oneness Pentecostal Tabernacle, and if you're just a guest watching for the first time or maybe recurringly, we welcome you today. Throughout the Bible, we have seen many, many times of crisis. There have been pandemics, famine, different kind of stressful situation. But one thing we have seen, nothing surprises God. Our text today is in 2 Peter 1 to 6. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. According as his divine power at giving unto us all that pertain, it, pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness father God, we're in your house today. Some of us are in our homes. Some of us may be at work. God, but wherever you are, wherever we are, we know you're there. You promise never to leave us or to forsake us. In good times, bad times, laughter and sadness, God, you're there with us. This word that I'm speaking, their words according to your book, their spirit and life. God, fill them with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Bring life. Bring joy, bring peace, oh God. Lord, help us today because your word tells us you will and your promises are true. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, bless this word, amen. 
First and Second Peter are general epistles written to the body of believers. This particular letter, Second Peter chapter one, is given to the body to warn of false believers, false prophets, telling the body of believers that Jesus is not coming. The writer of this epistle is the same Peter whose belief when he realized who God was, who Jesus was, the Lord said, up on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It is the same Peter who swore that Lord to Jesus, I would never deny you. Yet we saw in the garden that he was the first to do it. Not only did he deny the Lord, he was so angry, he chopped off the ears of the servant. Jesus had to do it, heal him. This particular book is the second general epistle now of a mature Peter. We can know, we can see that he's learned a thing or two. This Peter who's heard the gospels, seen the miracles, now a practicing acts. He's nearing the end of his life. It's turbulent times, economic crisis, religious crisis. He was being persecuted. He was facing perilous times, similar to what we're going through now. He was facing opposition of false teachers. Some things are true, some things are not. People saying what they want to say. But just like Peter today, we must partake in God's divine nature. If we want to be in the number that when he returns, he, Jesus said, these are they that came through great tribulation. At this time, the apostle was about, about 60 years old, or it's around 80, 60. Sometime, the numbers being what they are. And he would soon face martyrdom. Again, he was writing to a group of believers who had received a steady diet of false information, external pressures, and were starting to get shaky in their faith. The epistle was a message that Christ is coming back again. It was words to encourage and to build up the saints in their most holy faith. Regardless of who's talking in your ear, today I want you to remember, add to your most holy faith. Notice that Peter, because Peter writes that God, that the Holy Ghost is necessary for us to access these promises, we're going to look into some of these steps. What is power? What kind of power do they need? As the bishop would say, they need dunamis power, dynamic power, active power, power that can do something. To harness and apply this power, we need diligence, we need faith, we need virtue, we need knowledge, we need temperance, we need patience and godliness. So what is diligence? Diligence is the steady, earnest, energetic effort in the pursuit of a goal or a destination. It, diligence, when applied, allows for no deviation, no dis, disregard. It allows us to reach your goal. Faith, we know, is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. We know in Hebrews, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Virtue is conformity to a standard of what is right. It is morality. It's a particular moral excellence, and it's the capacity to act. Knowledge, the sum of what is known, the body of truth, information and principles that are, is acquired by humankind. Temperance is a proper and limited use of earthly enjoyment, basically things that are in the world, things that we see, things that we experience. Temperance, again, is keeping every sense or eyes or mouth or feelings under proper restraint and never permitting one's nature to rule our sober parts, never permitting our nature to rule us. Patience is bearing all trials and difficulties with an even mind. And I know for myself that's not always to do, and that's why I have to get godly, become close to God, get a deep reverence for him, a deep religious fear, not only worshiping God with my mouth, but worshiping him with my actions. 
by being adoring to him, loving him, magnifying him not only with my mirth, but in my heart, in the things that I think about, in the things that I reflect on. Magnifying him in my heart, having a character that is necessary for salvation. I know godliness in this time is often talked about, but in truth is very rare. Godliness requires self-sacrifice. It requires us to separate from the world. Godliness requires sometimes to be in those wilderness places, to be in situations that makes us uncomfortable, to be in situations where we have to use courage to overcome our fear. The psalmist David tells us in Psalm 63, verses 5 to 8, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night, watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul falleth hard after thee. My right, thy right hand upholded me. What is marrow? Marrow is that soft tissue that contains a lot of fat. I'm smiling because I'm one of those people that actually love fat. I only eat real fat, butter, fat. That's what I eat. No margarine, none of that stuff, unless it's in food that I don't know about. Again, marrow is in the bone. You find it in bone marrow. It is the substance of the spinal cord. It is in choicest food. It's the seat of animal or human or life vigor. In the, it is found in the innermost part. It is sometimes referred to as the best or essential part. Marrow is essential because none of us can live without a proper functioning bone marrow. Bone marrow is that soft, highly medically termed vascular, but in real everyday language, it's the connective tissue in the cavities of our bone. It has vessels, veins, ducts. It's a conduit. There are two types of bone marrow, one that is yellow, consisting chiefly of fat, fatty cells, and is found especially in the cavities of our long bones, like arms, legs, those kind of places. There's another kind of bone marrow that is reddish. It is the chief site of blood cell formation, and it occurs in, nat in the normal adult spongy bone tissue, especially of certain flat bones. The Christian commentator H. L. Lee Loring describes marrow as the nourisher and strengthener of the bones. It is said to moisten the bones. Marrow, the marrow of his bones is moistened. Job talked about that when he was facing sickness, and we know the tribulations of Job. The fear of Yahweh will be the health of thy navel, and marrow refreshing, moistening. Of, to thy bones. Proverbs 3 8 says, Thus the expression is figuratively used, which alone, which this thing alone can satisfy thy soul. My, in Psalm 63, the psalmist is saying, My soul is sat, shall be satisfied as with marrow, fat, and fatness. In the mountains, in this mountain, will Yahweh of hosts make unto all people. Feast of fat things, of feast and wines and lees of fat things, marrow. In, that is in Isaiah 25, 6. In the epistle of Hebrews, the writer speaks of the word of God, which is living. It's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's piercing even to the dividing of the soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. That's in Hebrews 4, 12. In Psalm 63, David described the satisfaction he finds, even though he was in the wilderness. He confidently, confidently expressed his will to praise God with joy. Notice he's in a wilderness. He's, wilderness is not a place of comfort generally. Wild, and a wilderness in its natural state, you have to search for food. You have to either search for it, bring it, or somebody bring it to you. The things that we need to sustain life is not always found in the wilderness. However, the psalmist said, I shall praise God. Therefore, true satisfaction 
which is a sense of ease and serenity, comes from completeness. This happens when we focus on the Lord and meditate on him and let his spirit infuse us with that dynamic power I spoke about earlier. Then we can get joy and gladness, strength and hope. We know it is in his presence we have fullness of joy. There is no doubt this can only happen when the Lord is our focus. We know that what we focus on is what we become. What is inside of us is what will come out. The inside of us, the spirit, the soul, the mind, the heart, is what affects the outside. No matter what, whatever, what I'm wearing today, somehow was in my thought. The clothes may have been in my closet, they have made other choices. But in my mind, this is how I saw myself and I got the things to do it. I don't know about you, but in the early weeks of this corona pandemic, it was very difficult, difficult, difficult to sleep, difficult to focus, forget about relaxation, must let's be calmly and peacefully meditating on any one thing. Like the Psalmist David, I had to get intentional. I had to be sober, sober not meaning I was drinking or taking some medication or drugs to alter my mind, Sober meaning I had to start recalling the times with God, my time with him. Also, my time when I was in the sanctuary, where I would see the faces of the saints, lifting up the praises of the Most High, worshiping him, binding together in prayer, worshiping God together, lifting up, getting strength and being refreshed to go out in the world. In this time, none of us was able to do this. We don't know if we'd be ever able to come back to the house of God. We didn't know if we were going to get sick and be one of those who never get a chance to even read the word of God. Like the psalmist again, we had to be intentional. So what did I do? I started to reflect upon this crazy, seemingly unreal and imaginable situation that we all, not just in our individual selves or our families, but our cities, our countries and the whole world. I was reminded of the reason why vitamin D is sometimes called the sunshine or the happy vitamin. Sunshine, we know, is the light and energy that comes from the sun. All life is dependent on it. When our bodies make vitamin D, our bodies make vitamin D when we're exposed to sunlight. Because a lot of people are not exposed to sunlight currently, there are different ways that they fortify your food, meaning they put it in our food so we can get it. This exposure to sunlight, the rays of the sun, believe it or not, radiation, certain kinds is good for us and necessary. That heat, that brightness, which caused certain type of cholesterol in our bodies to go through a process of change leading to the production of vitamin D. This vitamin D is essential to life. It protects us against bone disease. It regulates how much calcium. So it regulates calcium, which is a metal in our body. It stays in our blood, contributes to our heart health. We know the heart is essential for life. Whatsoever we think in our heart, so are we. So we know it is essential for life. Vitamin D helps strengthen our immune system. It gives protection. We know our immune system is that whole set of organs and body and liquids and fluids. I'm not a biologist, so I don't know all the ways that it works, but I just know immunity is what protects us from invaders. Vitamin D helps regulate self growth, cell growth. It helps us repair the body. It helps us strengthen our, our muscles. It provides perfection, protection from, and vitamin D also decrease our risk of developing certain bone disease. Also, it helps us with hypertension, certainly cancer, and certain autoimmune diseases. Vitamin D triggers the body's immune cells to produce antibodies. It is believed to promote an overall increase in the strength of the immune system. We know that bones are essential for structure, mobility, and growth. So you see that this vitamin that our body makes when we're exposed to the sun, to heat, to brightness, to radiation. 
good radiation, not over too much of it, but radiation promotes health, gives us ability to stand up properly, gives us ability to walk. We get mobility, we get strength. Again, vitamin D is essential for health, but believe it or not, according to the scientists, only a little amount is required. One th interesting thing I've found out about vitamin D is that it breaks all the rules for vitamin because it is produced in the human body. Also, vitamin D is absent from most natural foods except fish and egg yolks. Even when we get it from food, it must be transformed by the body before it can do us any good. No matter how we get vitamin D into our body, our bodies must do something for it to work. This is the same with the word of God. We all know, it's nothing new to any of us that the word is essential for us to live a fulfilling life, to live a godly life, to have temperance, to have patience, to have faith, to have virtue, as told to us in the great promises in 2 Peter 1. Yes, God has given us all that pertain to life and godliness, but to take part in this divine nature, we must be diligent, again, steadfast, earnest, energetic, and to, in getting to know him. This is part of why we praise. This is part of why we worship. This is why we pray. This is why we make intercession. This is why we are kind to people. Faith, which we know is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is when we put belief, those words that we hear, our acceptance of the, those words is belief, but faith is when we start acting on those belief. It's the transition from the gospel to the acts of the apostles. That's what faith is. The 12 apostles were not the only ones that were called and were around Jesus. We saw multitudes of people there with him. But in the day of, on the day of Pentecost, there was how many? In the upper room. 120 in the upper room. Virtues or virtue or virtuosity is the obedience and execution of that which is committed to us by God. Some people have natural virtue. They're just gifted with music, art, science, math, different things. Well, I, at some point in my life, I was one of those people. Now, well, at this stage, I still can count, add, and keep track. So um, virtue is the obedience and execution of that which is committed to us by God, or natural gifts, or training, the words that we hear. It is moral excellence in our action. Knowledge, the sum of what is known. Knowledge is what we know. It is the body of truth. It is information, principles acquired by humankind. Notice, knowledge is different from information. Information is all the in stuff that's out there. Knowledge is when we apply senses to it, when we think about it, when we decide to act according. Temperance, a proper and limited use of earthly enjoyments, whatever they may be, right? Keeping every sense under proper restraints, never permitting our nature, never permitting our sin nature, the desires, things that we want above what is required to rule our conscience, to rule our mind, to contradict what the word of God tells us. Patience bearing all trials and difficulties with an even mind. It is enduring all and keeping through all. Godliness, that deep respect for God, its practice of his commands, it is what makes us forgiving. It is what makes us enduring. It is what makes us go through hardship. It is what makes the nurses get up knowing that, yes, I'm a professional, but some professional choose not to get up and go that day. But my patients need me. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to go in there and take care of my patients, even though I may be fearful of myself, even though I may have medical conditions myself, I'm going there to take care of them. These characteristics, maintain 
helps us. Virtue, faith, temperance. They help us maintain the blood of Jesus in our lives. They help us absorb the word of God. They help us get structure and begin to become godly. They help us maintain the connections with each other, even if we rub each other wrong. Even if something ha that we do upset this, another person. Even if what they do upset us, we take on Christ's nature. We take on that nature of God that says, what I have, what they need is important, more important than what I'm going through. These virtues help us maintain a healthy mood. In this corona, in the beginning, I have to tell you, I was looking, one of them, looking to food, maybe, comfort. I can't go outside. I can't do some of the things that I would normally do to enjoy, whether it's go to the gym, see my family, see my friends, see my coworkers. And I started to eat a little bit more than I normally would. And since I'm not moving the way I normally did, you know what happens. Mar but remember that vitamin D, we don't need a lot of it. We don't need a lot of those oils. And so I had to get, I had to get myself together and start going back the way I normally live. In the same way, vitamin D helps the reproductive part of our physical bodies. But I learned this in this preparing for this message, that it helps the breast, which provides sustenance. It helps the colon, which helps us get out things that we don't need. It helps the prostate, which is part of the male reproductive organ. And so diligence, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, and self-control help us manage our sinful nature so we don't produce the way, we don't get the wages of sin. We learn to produce the peaceable fruit of righteousness. If we don't, just like if we don't get the proper amounts of vitamin D in our physical bodies, spiritual sickness will result if we don't get the proper amount of God's word and his light of his Holy Spirit burning with the light of his word in our soul. The good news is, thank God he gave us his word. He gave us all this to prepare us for this time. We would, if we, I know for me personally, if I didn't have the word of God, I don't know what would have happened when I get calls that people I know are exceedingly sick. I don't know what I would have done if members of my church are literally taking care of more than 10 people who have lost their lives in one night. This is trauma that they have to face. How do I encourage them? What do I say? How do I do this? How do I be a support? How do I be a sound voice? How do I be the voice of reason? We know that in those situations, I couldn't just take the word of God for granted. I had to go back, sit down, relax, calm myself, get myself together and say, God, since nothing surprised you, you're the almighty, you're the alpha and omega, you knew this would come. So I'm not going to just sit there and let your word pass through my body on, like unprocessed food. I'm going to mix your word with the concentrated light of your Holy Spirit to like sunshine to make me see you. Now, to get this benefit, I had to become exposed to people, hear their situation. I had to be exposed to the word. I had to become vulnerable. I had to be strengthened. I had to be willing to be processed and purified with life and vigor so that we can conquer the sphere that's running rampant in society. The doubt created by this pandemic and find the protection and safety in Jesus when faced with these cares of life. As mother, mother during the season, we still have our careers. Most of us did. Some were working from home, so now the children are home, the different working environment, new technology, new responsibilities. We had to find a way how to get over the fear and anxiety. This is when we had to get into that secret place, in that seemingly invisible, but yet very real space. I mean, most times we don't see sunlight. We feel it. We know it's there. We see its effect around us in the environment. We know the word tells us God dwells in the secret place. Those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. David tells us, I will say of my soul, 
He's my refuge and strength. He's my fortress. This is where the transplanted DNA of the Almighty takes root in our soul and gives us the tools to overcome in the season. Psalm 63 is written by David, again, I said earlier, in a wilderness. This is a very beautiful psalm of devotion to our God and Lord Jesus Christ. One commenter, Matthew Henry, wrote, Just as the sweetest of Paul's epistles were those sent out from a Roman prison, so are some of the sweetest psalms composed by David as he fled in the wilderness of Judah, running away from his own son. This was a psalm of a king who was temporarily denied access. Yeah, the scripture tells us we as body of the bo members of the body of Christ are a chosen priesthood, a royal people, holy people call unto God. Yet now we're temporarily, we're denied access to the sanctuary. The Bible tells us, oh, we we'll come to his sanctuary, to his loving kindness, to experience the fellowship of the saints together. So like David, we need to cry out to God from a parched and dry desert. There are certain scholars that agree that King David during this flight through the wilderness of Judah from the enemy, who at the time was Absalom, his son, in this harsh and inexplicable surroundings, David cried out, O oh God, thou art my God, early I will seek thee, my soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory. So, I, so as I have seen in the sanctuary, the same experience we experience in the church, wherever you are today, go that God, know that God is with you. Wherever you are today, in your home, at work, traveling, know that God is with you today. See the same power, experience it now on a personal level like you've never experienced before. Why? Because his loving kindness, yes, even though it's happened, this is happening to us. He's making provision. He's making ways that we cannot see. So thus, in your home, lift up your hands. Uh, thus I will bless thee. Thus will I bless you. I will lift up my hands in your praise. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and thy mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed, when I remember thee upon my couch, when I remember thee at my kitchen table, when I remember thee with my whole heart. Now, we see in 2 P Peter 1, many, 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 many years later, Peter, the apostle, during turbulent times, Tough economic times, tough religious times, testing of faith. He's saying, for by his divine power. In the Amplified, it says it like this. For his divine power has bestowed, given unto us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual and godly life. Through a true and personal knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence. For by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value so that by them we can escape what's happening in this world. So it's God's divine power that gives us the potential for everything. Yeah, I know that sounds like stuff, we know it. But in this case, when everything seemed desperate, when everything seemed desperate, when deadly things are outside of our control, we're afraid to go to the store. We're afraid to t hug our family. We're afraid to touch things that would normally be of no conscious thought. Or even just the days, overwhelming times when we're shut up in our house. The Lord will drop his kind words of mercy and compassion in our soul and remind us why we are mothers. He reminds us of our true knowledge in him. It is he who called us by and for his glory to make us mothers in these times. Sometimes in that still small voice, he will remind us that he's given to us the potential through our children to make the world a better place. To remind us 
we have the wherewithal for moral behavior to escape the wages of sin and to reap the peace of the fruit of righteousness looking for eternal life with him. It is Jesus' sacrifice and his sinless blood which allows us to partake and in his divine nature. It is this nature which strengthen me and remind me, remind the essential workers, remind the mothers at home, the fathers, some who have their own medical issues, that when they step inside to go do their work, when we have to leave our home, with, because there's no other way, there's no other choice. Something that is necessary for life requires that we leave the safety and protection of our home, that we bring the supernatural power and DNA of the Almighty God, which he gave for us through the sacrifice of his resurrected son, Jesus Christ. The same one who overcome anxiety, the anxiety of death on the cross in the garden of Gethsemane. The same garden where he prayed intense prayers, intense prayers where his sweat, sweat became as drops of blood. Paul tells us in the epistles, let this mind be new, which is also in Christ. That's a promise that we have. The mind that was in Christ is new mind, renewed mind is able to sustain and keep us. He's the same yesterday to get, he's the same yesterday and forevermore. He is and continue to be your help. No matter what comes, he's our help. Tribulations, we were told it would come. I didn't know I would be living it in my lifetime. I've had bad experiences, but not to this degree. Yes, Jesus is our help. Persecution, Jesus is our help. Distress, Jesus is our help. COVID sickness, Jesus is our help. Continue to trust him. Don't let your soul be so cast down. The psalmist said, Mo, my soul, why art thou cast, soul? cast down? Let his right hand uphold you. Let it lift you up. Remember earlier, we talked about bones. We talked about structure. We talked about marrow. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God from top to toe. Yes, cover the heart. Cover the mind. Sing the songs of praise. Lift up a praise in Zion. We know it's not always easy to do. In Psalms, we saw the children of Israel in captivity saying, Oh, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We're still in the same land we were. Situations may be strange, but it's the same God. It is the same God. Lift up your voice to him. Worship him. It is the God that says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you. I will be with you always, even to the end of the earth. It is the same God that says, I love you so much. I look for salvation. I couldn't find it anywhere, but my own arm brought you salvation. It is the same God who knows that we will be calling on him and he made provision for us. When all is said and done, we still have to stand. He's given us his Holy Spirit, which gives us power, not only over sin, but power and courage in time of distress. By having God's Holy Spirit, being fed by his word, covered by his perfect blood, that perfect blood shed for us during this Passover. God, this Passover we recently celebrated, time of Easter, in the original Passover, he told Moses, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. What is that telling me? What is that telling you? Stuff is happening in the world, but we will not go through it the same way. You know, Passover 2020 was one of the first time in recorded history where most of the world was at rest. Maybe not intentional, chosen rest, but the world, I read this. When I read it, I was, my eyes, it just blew me away that the earth literally stopped vibrating to the extent it was because the trucks weren't driving, because the trains weren't rattling, the earth was able to stabilize itself so much, it was able to be measured. This was one time where people, even if they don't know God like we do, even if they don't know God, they never experienced the whole baptism of the Holy Spirit. Water baptize, baptism was calling out to us. This reminds me of a song that says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now, in this time, I tell you, when we bought our house, we went there, we prayed, you know, have fellowship, all that stuff. But in the stuff, when the, re listening to the news, seeing all the stuff and talking to people who were in this pandemic, frontline workers, I had to get out my house, take my oil, 
oil up my door. In the name of Jesus, you can't come in here. If you come here, you can't live here. I had to do it. If you come here, Corona, you cannot live here. One songwriter wrote it, said it this way. I'm going to stay right under the blood. I'm going to stay right under the blood. I'm going to stay right under the blood where the devil can't do me no harm. Nobody knows where this, at least, if somebody knows, they haven't told us yet where this virus came from. If they know, nobody's told us. We've heard a lot of things. So I'm going to rest on the rock of my salvation. He has been and will continue to be my shelter, your shelter, everybody who takes shelter, everybody who run to him. He is the shelter in the time of the storm. The thing with God is sometimes the world is raging, storming's happening all around us, and he's asleep. We're like, God, where are you? This is not new. This is what happened with his disciples. And so, no harm, no harm, no harm. No harm, no harm, no harm. I'm going to stay right under the blood where the devil can't do me no harm. So as mothers, we, when the struggles of life overwhelm our soul, besides the obvious that the Lord is coming soon, I'm reminded that this Passover we just experienced is one of the few times the Jewish Christian holidays combine. This one, the first Passover happened over so many years of captivity and at the point where the people couldn't take it no more. I can't say when this pandemic is gonna be over. I don't know. One thing I do know, how long, however long it lasts, God has promised to be my help. You've been the help just for basic food. You've been the help providing shelter. You've been the help providing strength. Your promises are sure. At Calvary, it wasn't a cry that many that brought deliverance that time. It wasn't like the original Passover where the children of Israel all crying. At that time, it was the cry of our great Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, yielding himself to death on the cross, providing perfect blood for salvation, healing for a body, mind, and soul. The ultimate Passover is coming when the Lord shall gather his saints. Revelation 7, 13 to 15 tells us, and the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Everyone, as we journeyed through these times, the promises of God are sure. The Lord is still, 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 still in charge. Nothing surprised him. He gave us his perfect DNA on Calvary. He gave us his perfect love. Remember, God's word is still living and active. Yes, virus is active. God's word is still alive and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. So remember, Jesus is bigger even than this virus. It doesn't mean that we're going to be crazy. They'll wash our hands. They'll clean our house eat whatever we want, go wherever we wear, and do whatever. We still got to follow the rules and laws of our land. God told us in his promise, he will be faithful to a thousand generations. He's faithful, not, he's faithful to us not because we, of what we do. It's just because of who he is. He's faithful because he's God. Remember, in the beginning I said, nothing surprised God. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. We read that in Psalms 107, 20. So when the cares of life come, the promise of God will keep us. He's the comforter, the Holy Ghost. I will cling to that. When my heart is tempted to fear and look to things of the world, behold, God, you are my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. God, the almighty creator, way maker God, necessary for life, reminds us, you are good. You're a stronghold in the day of trouble and them that trust in him shall be strong. I trust in the Lord, said I, but thou art my God, that's David again. Prior, a sure weapon. So even this time of stress, 
seeming endless death and destruction, as mothers take comfort, God give rest unto his people, Israel, according to Ordeus Cronin, 1 Kings 8, 56. The apostle, someone who lived, the apostle Paul, someone who lived during turbulent geopolitical times, encouraged the saints in Thessalonians 2, but the Lord is faithful who establish you and keep you from evil. Again, encouraging Timothy, if we believe not, he yet abided faithful, cannot deny himself. Knowing the test of her fate will come, John the Revelator said, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judged and made war. The prior ministry is here. The intercessors are here. The prior of the faith, the prior of the saints changes things. The prior of the saints changes mind. The prior of the saints changes our bodies. The prior of the saints. So I came to deliver this message. It's not big complicated thing. It's just basic reminder on Mother's Day. Just take heart knowing that the Lord promised never to leave us or forsake us. His promises are sure. The promises that he gave to Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. All of you listening today, the fact that you're listening, meaning you're not slain. Things may come. Pressure may come. Facing the cares of this time, God said in his promise, God said in his word, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am God and I cannot lie. So those precious promise, hold on to them. Hold on to them. I came to deliver this message of hope. In these time of economic, social unrest, even health uncertainty, to let you know, God is not surprised. Before, before this happened, before there was ever COVID, he told us in his word, I've given you all that pertains to life and godliness. Everyone listening, take this time to reflect on it. Take this time as Mother's Day. We celebrate our moms, but let's celebrate the church. The Bible tells us it is the mother of us all. God came and gave his life because he knew we would need life. Just like he made the sun, just like he to regenerate our, our bodies, to give us this vitamin when we're low, strengthen us, allow us to stand. We will depend upon his word. Be partakers of those promises given to us by Jesus. Have you experienced the new birth? Do you know what the new birth is? Have you been, if you don't know, again, our altar workers, our intercessors, men and female are available to listen to you. Hear what you're going through. Go in deep prayer with you to share with you these promises. Tell you how they've activated these promises and share with you what God has done in their life. How they overcome, not just COVID, the things they overcome to get here and stand in faith. Were your sins washed away? Were you buried with him in baptism? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance? We saw the Apostle Peter writing in 2 Peter that we must build up our most holy faith. He was able to do that because what he heard in the gospel, he put it in practice. And then on that day of Pentecost, he experienced the promise spoken about in Joel, reiterated, spoken about by Jesus again, telling them, when I leave, I'm going to give you a comforter. The Holy Spirit, that's what that comforter is. It's what strengthens us. It's like that vitamin D, bring you sunshine, renew our bones, give us immunity from sin, peace within, as the songwriters say. Again, are you filled with God's spirit? Did you receive it? And because of what happened, get low? Again, be exposed to the light of the spirit. Be filled again with him. Especially our mothers on Calvary, Jesus brought you help 
for this time of need. Help for renewed strength. To, he brought help for the moms parenting other people's children, the adopted mom, the widowed mother. This may be the first Mother's Day without your spouse. Help for the COVID mother, balancing all these roles. Let us pray together. Father, Lord, I want to see you and become yours. Father, today, a day of reflection, a day of celebration. Lord, God, we ask you again, heal our mind. Not just our mind, this land need healing. And God, we come to you repenting for ourselves, repenting for our nation and for our world. You promised in Second Chronicles when that beautiful temple was dedicated, you said, Lord, if we humble ourselves, meaning we tell the truth, say who we are, admit our condition. Don't pretend it's something that it's not. God, you said you would heal, forgive our sin and you would heal our land. Call. Even if you're a member of oneness and you're going through, just like you would kneel at the altar when we're in the sanctuary, just like David longing for the tabernacle, just like Peter facing those situations, questions in his mind, questions of people around him, go back to God. Find that place of renewal and saying, my hope is in God. Father, thank you for your word. God, thank you for your sanctuary. God, just like Moses, you tell him to take off his shoes because where he is is holy. Our homes can be holy at this moment. God, we bow down before you. We look to you. We don't take this moment lightly. It's another opportunity to look to you. And so, if you're viewing this video, you reside in New York City, and you're looking for a home church, text the words, count me in. Or I want to join the 347-862-9261. Or you can email pray for me at oneness.nyc and someone will get back to you soon. Thank you for listening to me. I mean, I'm not some great preacher. All I am is somebody who have practiced the word. The promises, I took a hold of them and I'm reaping the peace of the fruit of righteousness. Thank you for worshiping with us and we look to see you again, praying that this will pass over and that God, you will restore unto us not only the joy of our salvation, but the fellowship of your saints. And God, since you know all things, you are the Alpha and Omega. And Lord, we look to you, anticipating that day where we're in fellowship with you and each other. Thank you in Jesus' name.